What's up guys? My name is Keizo and I'm just here with you guys in Insomniac to kind of just show you a little in-depth look at what I do behind the decks for my live shows. Tell me that you know you feel it every single time. Tell me that you know you feel it every single time. So I wanna show you what that trick is actually. It's just an echo effect trick that is something like you've probably heard out many times from many DJs. So what I'll show you here is I'll play a build of this track that I just played and I'll kind of show you what I'm doing here in terms of getting that really screechy metallic sound that goes over well with crowds. What you have here is you have all your different types of effects that come in with the Pioneer Mixer. For this particular effect, it's the echo effect and it's a trick through the millisecond delay that gets you that really, really crunchy metallic sound. So you have your tap on here. This is basically what it's setting your tempo as you can see here. It says tap. Right now it says 139 BPM and this gives you the milliseconds. Um, for this particular effect, you need to have a really, really, really high BPM. So what I do is I just tap it really, really fast. Say I got 500 right there, that's good for this particular effect. What I need at this point is to know what count I'm on. I'm on 1-1 one, one right here. Usually I'll do like a half bar beat measure with this effect, but sometimes it sounds better with 1 8 So what I'll do is through the time knob, I set the millisecond to about 25 millisecond delay to start. And then you'll see what I'm doing and I'll explain it again for you, so. So I have the button, I have the effect on now. What that's doing is just speeding up the millisecond from 25 to one millisecond. It's getting that echo delay crunched down to such a small measure that it just ends up making that cool echo effect, screechy sound. All that really requires is a good part of the track, AKA build, and then you being able to turn the beat effect part of the mixer on, which is what this means when it's blinking, this means that the effects are on. This level depth will basically tell you, right now it's set to minimum, which is so if I had it on, you'll hear no effect. But if I had it on, say in the middle, you'll hear some sort of echo effect. You can hear that kind of weird, distorted, echoed effect sound. That means it's on. So usually for me in these, this particular effect, I just set it in the middle, because anything more is just overkill. The time knob here, this will basically just go through the motions of the different milliseconds. You can go all the way across the board, up until one millisecond. The amount of time I have to do this trick, I'll usually set between 20 to 25 milliseconds, which just gives me a good amount of time to accurately go down to one throughout the build. Once I start the build, all this takes is just turning the time knob to the left to get down to one millisecond. That's when you really hear the rotation of the milliseconds going from kind of a crunchier, more gallopy thing that they're hitting off each other into more of like a metallic screechy sound that you get. So you can kind of hear it's super, super just like transforming right here. I'm getting it down. And that's just a cool little effect I like to throw over a lot of my builds. Thanks for hanging out with me today. My name's Keizo, and you guys can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, all under Keizo Music. Hit me up with anything. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about the jog wheel. So the jog wheel is this whole little circle plate looking thing that you put your tacos on when you're not DJing on it. This bad boy is what is gonna control your tracks. There's two types of modes here. You have your jog mode section.